Welcome to the Simplify Your Life podcast. It's Coach Simona and I'm glad you decided to tune in. Hey everyone, in today's podcast episode we're going to talk about how to self-reflect. And I'm going to share with you 5 in-depth tips, techniques and helpful questions on how to do self-reflection. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Simona. Certified Life Coach and author of the book 111 Ways to Simplify Your Life. I make weekly podcast episodes on personal development, so if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. Now, before we get into my five tips on how to self-reflect, let's talk about the importance of self-reflection and why it can seem intimidating at first. One of the biggest misconceptions about self-reflection is that it's selfish. It can make you self-absorbed or narcissistic. Well, in reality, self-reflection is actually one of the healthiest things you can do not only for becoming more self-aware, but also for improving your relationships with others. Self-reflection helps you see yourself more objectively, become aware of your strengths and weaknesses, and know how to navigate life in a healthier and more constructive way. So why is it so hard to do self-reflection? Mainly because we have lots of cognitive biases and blind spots, meaning we see reality in a distorted way, and sometimes make decisions based on the different ways we've been conditioned to think by society, our families, or teachers. I've already created an entire series on cognitive biases on my YouTube channel. So if you want to learn more about all the possible ways you may see reality in a distorted way, just visit bit.ly slash cognitive biases examples. I will also leave a link in the description box below. Now that we're aware of the benefits of self-reflection, let's get into my first tip on how to self-reflect. Ask yourself introspective questions. Today's podcast episode is going to be mainly about self-reflection questions in journaling format. But if you're new to journaling, I want to assure you that it's way easier than you think. I like the good old-fashioned way of journaling using pen and paper, but many people use their laptop or tablet. There is no right or wrong way to journal, so you do you. Here are 10 introspective questions to get you started. 1. Who am I when no one's watching? 2. What did I enjoy doing growing up? 3. What are my three biggest strengths? 4. What are my three biggest weaknesses? 5. What are three things that I'm grateful for? 6. What have I learned in the past year? 7. What inspires me the most? 8. If I had all the money I could possibly need, what would I be doing with my life? 9. What is the most difficult challenge I had to overcome and how did it make me stronger? 10. What are my top 3 core values? To help you with the last question, I've created a free cheat sheet with the top 98 values to choose from. You can download it by clicking the link in the description box below or simply visiting bit.ly slash 98 values. Now, these 10 questions are just the beginning when it comes to self-reflection. They're foundational easy to answer and barely scratching the surface. Which actually brings me to the next point, which is to dig deeper using the 5-Y method. The 5-Y method is all about asking yourself the question why five times to get to the root cause of the problem. For example, let's say you snapped at your spouse this morning seemingly over nothing. You can dig deeper and find the real cause for your frustration by doing the following exercise. Why number one? Why did I snap at my husband this morning? Because he forgot to do the dishes. 2. Why did I snap at him? Because I got frustrated. Why? Because he's been forgetting a lot of things lately. Why did I snap at him? Because he doesn't pay enough attention to me. Why did I snap? Because I feel like I'm not important. By using the 5Y method, you get to the root of any problem, which will help you understand yourself better and communicate your needs in a healthier way. Which brings me to my next tip, and that is to meet your own emotional needs. Self-reflection has a lot to do with knowing what you need and want out of life. If you often feel disconnected from your body and find yourself constantly ruminating over the past or daydreaming about the future, that is a sign that you're not tuned into the present moment. So how can you reconnect with yourself and understand what you actually need so that you can take better care of yourself? By asking yourself one simple question throughout the day. What do I need right now? By reflecting on this question, you can not only meet your basic needs, such as eating when you're hungry or sleeping when you're tired, but also your emotional needs. 
So how do you become more in tune with your emotional needs so that you can meet them? One of the easiest ways to do that is to imagine that someone close to you is sitting right in front of you. If they could do something for you right now, what would you like them to do? By answering this question, you will become more aware of your emotional need. And then you can strategize on different ways to meet that need, preferably on your own, so you don't have to rely on others to meet your needs. After a while, when you do this self-reflection exercise daily, you will become more tuned into your inner needs and desires and no longer need to imagine someone else doing them for you. You'll instinctively know what you need and what steps you need to take to meet that need. My next tip on how to self-reflect is to sit in silence and observe your thoughts. This self-reflection exercise will require 5-10 to 10 minutes of your time. We won't be using any journaling techniques or tools. All you have to do is go somewhere where you know you won't be disturbed, sit somewhere comfortable, and close your eyes. Now, I want you to take a few deep breaths, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Pay attention to your thoughts coming and going. Notice them passing by like clouds in the sky. See them as a silent observer, without judging them. Simply watching them come and go. After 5-10 to minutes, you can gently open your eyes, stretch your arms and legs, and reflect on what you just noticed. Were there any repetitive thoughts or themes? Did you feel the need to pause because you felt overwhelmed by your feelings? What did you find the most interesting about this exercise? You can also journal on these questions if you want to. Which brings me to the next tip on how to self-reflect. Pay attention to your reactions. One of the best ways to do self-reflection is to observe the way you interact with others, especially in a heated argument or when you feel triggered. Here's how to self-reflect on your reactions when it comes to communicating with other people. Next time you get into a fight with someone or you notice that you're about to say something that you're going to regret, I want you to pause for a second. Take a deep breath. Notice the thoughts that are going through your head. Notice the sensations in your body. Notice the situation from three perspectives. Your perspective, the other person's perspective, and a third person perspective. Why are you reacting this way? Is there something from your past that reminds you of this situation? Or does your reaction match the situation right here, right now? Can you empathize with this person and why they may be feeling this way? What could they be feeling if you put yourself in their shoes? And for the third person perspective, if you could see the situation from a bird eye's view, would you take it so seriously? Is there a need to continue the fight or maybe try to resolve the conflict instead? What do you want to achieve in the end? By asking yourself these questions, you will self reflect on your behavior and look for healthier ways to resolve the conflict or maybe not even get into a fight next time you feel triggered. The more you can see yourself objectively from a third-person perspective, the more self-aware you will become. I've been working on something behind the scenes, and I can't wait to reveal more details at the beginning of next year. All I'm going to say for now is that it will include lots of journaling prompts and exercises for self-reflection, self-compassion, self-love, and so much more. If you want to be the first to know and get your hands on some exclusive bonuses, Click the first link in the description box below or head over to bit.ly slash the secret waitlist. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please like it. And subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on my weekly podcast episodes. I'm sending you all my love and I'll talk to you in the next one.